shocking really, isn't it? And you have to say, what have they got to hide? It tells us quite a lot about the intimidation and threats they tried to put on people. And if you think about it, it's an affront to free speech because the people who work here, who know what's at stake, are the best people to talk to you and others about why they're making this sacrifice and having a five-day strike. And so what the management are really doing is adding a threat onto people. And given that we've seen <coughs> yesterday the suspension of one of our leading activists, it tells us that management seem more intent on trying to cow the workforce and try to undermine the union than they are sort out this dispute. They've targeted one of our reps who was involved in the ACAS negotiations, the first working day after spending hours in negotiations with ACAS with the aim of trying to explore a solution. One of the reps comes back in the next day and is targeted for disciplinary action. No way! Here to stay! No way! Here to stay! This dispute, I think, raises quite a lot of issues. It's about how we treat our public institutions, one of Britain's most iconic places, why are they bringing in the private sector, why have they already spent half a million pounds of public money, what's the real agenda? And you have to say that the idea that some of our greatest institutions are being run for private profit raises all sorts of questions as, as time goes on. And in many ways, therefore, I think this is the thin end of the wedge. National Gallery today, who knows what could come next. So this really is a very important strike. It's, it's about real principle, about believing that the public should own these places and they should be public sector institutions, not there for private companies to make money. This is the tip of the iceberg of privatisation of our work, basically. What it means, as you know better than anyone else, the de-skilling of the jobs themselves, cutting wages, and then eventually the use of agencies to introduce zero-hours contracts and other forms of exploitation. On average, already low-paid members have seen their pay uh, living standards reduce somewhere between 12 and 14 percent. We're talking about, you know, many members having to exist on, you know, 16 to 18,000. Uh, it is to the eternal shame of the management board that it is the only major museum and gallery in London that doesn't pay the London living wage. They made promises in the past to address this question, but have now backtracked. And that's one of the many other issues that contribute to this particular dispute. When I was on the radio this morning on BBC Radio London about the strike, the management claimed that they are privatising your jobs to be able to pay you the London living wage. Now, have you ever heard anything like it? They're actually going to privatise it so they can pay you more money. Now, when it was pointed out that the private company have to make profits, so if they were going to pay you more money, it could only be because they'd make loads of job losses or change people's terms and conditions, the management haven't got an answer. The management have to acknowledge in a 62% turnout, 94.9% .9 of the members voted in favour of a five-day strike. It tells us that people are determined. I think it tells us that whilst one day strikes can have their place, that people here and many others now think you've got to go beyond protesting and actually take action It's going to have a serious effect. PCS as a whole have started doing some important work to try to go beyond one day strikes and I think this is the type of model you should look at. And it follows on from six days of strikes we had in the DWP in Liverpool a six-day strike in the Ministry of Justice uh, Shared Service Centre. So increasingly, it seems to me, that people are prepared to embrace longer periods of action. Our message is, keep the National Gallery in public hands, pay you a wage that you deserve, carry on saying this is one of our greatest institutions, so we're going to start acting like it, and stand together and make sure they can't pick off your reps. I worked alongside Candy at University College Hospital, where we were facing a dispute and a lead up to a strike about privatisation. And what happened to me was that I was sacked. We had huge solidarity from the local trade unionists, huge solidarity from the local community, and massive solidarity from the people that we worked with inside the hospital. And that led to a complete reinstatement from me, all charges dropped, it also led to a doubling in the size of the union and most importantly a complete reversal of all of the plans that the management had at the time. Well done everyone, your union's proud of you, you should be proud of yourselves, no privatisation, 
London living wage and hands off your reps. Good luck everybody and I hope to see you during the week and next week at the meeting in Parliament. Thanks a lot. Victimisation! No way! Come